Gentlemen, come and take your seats. Come take your seat here. We've got uh, Julian coming up now from Fields of Green for All. So come take your seats and uh, enjoy the chat. Hello. Hello. Good morning, Durban. Hello there. Day three of the groundbreaking Cannabis Expo. Can you believe what you're looking at? So my name, for those of you who don't know me, is Julian Stobbs. And I'm a part member of the nonprofit company Fields of Green for All, which my partner and I set up in 2013 to deal with the complexities of legalizing cannabis in South Africa. Could I have a quick show of hands, please? Who doesn't use cannabis products at the moment? Who's here just to have a look? Who doesn't use cannabis right now? Well, what I want to say to you guys is, welcome to our world. Because we've been doing this all of our adult lives. And as the previous speaker, Ras Tautau, said, we have come to no harm whatsoever. It is one of the most harmless products in the world on the face of the earth. So, the judge said, you go home and smoke dacha on your stoop. So I have traveled around the country for the last eight months, and I can tell you that South Africans are taking this judge very seriously. Everybody's growing weed in South Africa, and it's amazing to see. However, we're not out of the woods yet. There is a lot of work to do. And Fields of Green for All doesn't really deal with the benefits of cannabis. We have spent the last eight years dealing with the harms of prohibition because the harms of prohibition far outweigh any perceived harms of this plant. This is still going on. And it goes on with increasing regularity. The cops are on the warpath again. This is three weeks ago at a peaceful market in Pretoria. It was a cannabis open day, and it was just like this, but a flea market with CBD products and, and goods and services. However, just like here, there were undercover cops walking around, because wherever there's weed, for a hundred years there's been an undercover cop. And the cops arrived, and there was one bag, and one bag had a hundred grams and a couple of grand in it. And if you've got weed and money in the same place at the same time, you can expect a hard time. Because the guy in the suit said, go home and grow. He didn't say sell. Problem. There are headlines like this happening all over, all over the media. This one's in Limpopo from a couple of months ago. Take a good look at that picture. Does it look anything like a drug lab? It looks like a four-day binge. But the guys went down. The place was trashed. Everything was torched. They stole the money. They didn't put it into evidence, and the cops are on the warpath. How about this? This garden was in Randburg three weeks ago. It doesn't exist anymore because the hawks rocked up, fully armed, with no warrant, pulled 66 plants, which five adults were growing for personal use. They set fire to the plants in front of the owner of the house and then threw him in a jail for six days without charge. We all gathered at Randburg Magistrates Court because the hawks said third, three million rands worth of weed, the magistrate gave one man 30,000 rand bail last week just for growing 66 plants. Does that sound like Dacher on my stoop? This man is traumatized for months to come. Fields of Green for All and the cannabis community rallied round, and there was a total of 45,000 rands worth of bail that day for growing 66 plants for five adults. However, there's good news. We managed to get it into the Sunday papers, and you will see now at the Fields of Green store, we've got an initiative called Stop the Cops because they must be stopped. And I am quoted in this Sunday Times last week saying, we are going to hand in an affidavit to the Hawks to tell them that if they walk onto anybody's property once more with a warrant, without a warrant, we're going to nail them. Because that's what we're going to do. Because they are breaking a constitutional order. And how about this? There are 57 people in that room and there are 30 bunks. 
It's 20 k's down the road at Westville Maximum Security. It's a shit place to be. Five people were arrested in Port Shepstons 18 months ago for growing four kilos of weed. And these two people have been in that same room for 16 months without bail, without opening their mouths in any defense whatsoever. Does that sound like Dacher on my stoop? We have a lot of work to do. That's why we're trying to stop the cops. And when I mean stop the cops, I don't mean rocking up with an R4. I mean take the cops away from cannabis altogether. They're not qualified to deal with cannabis. They don't know a thing about it. Why did they burn those 66 plants? Is because they're scared to death of it. There's good news. There are people pushing the boundaries of the law all the time. There's a franchise going around that is built around the traditional healing laws. And there's one man selling franchises in just about every city in the land at the moment. They're all over the place. This is a screen grab from one in four ways, 200 meters from the police station that gave the 30,000 rand bail. 200 meters. 250 rand a gram for medical marijuana. But if you look on the price list on the website, it deals in cannabis concentrates. However, when you get to the shop, there's weed everywhere. No prescription, no sangoma, no medical, no inyanga, no nothing. Just weed. Some of them have shut down because they can't handle the pressure from the local authorities. And I can tell you a really funny story. Three weeks ago, Myrtle and I were doing a presentation to 320 traditional healers and farmers in Mpumalanga. We showed them the same slides to the head of the traditional healers organization. And she said, if, they, if we could do that, we would do that for the last 100 years. But we don't sell ganja as medicine because we're not allowed to sell ganja. But it's taking it to the people. There are logos with weed leaves in every shopping mall to normalize it. So I don't say this is good or bad. I'm just saying there are people, brave people, pushing the boundaries all the time to change the laws. There are clubs operating all over the country now. This one is in Cape Town. It is so private, you, I defy you to find it unless you remember and you know where that little button is on the street. It's literally on the high street and observatory. Nobody knows where it is. There is no money. There's no money transacted. It is a private space for like-minded people. And we believe this model, the Spanish model of cannabis social clubs, is the future because of this privacy ruling. You have a private space. Gather your closest friends around and form some sort of cooperative or society. And then there's this. The labor laws have not caught up with anything to do with the Constitution. And I will guarantee that most of you who work for the man signed a contract that had a clause that said the man can take your bodily fluids and look at them whenever he likes. And that's what he's doing. So if, you're, if the man doesn't like you, he can test your blood or your urine. And if you've got THC in it, he can dismiss you summarily on the spot. And unfortunately, Three weeks ago, the CCMA agreed with it. So three guys lost their job because it was proved by the test that they had weed in their system. It did not prove they were impaired. It did not prove that they couldn't do their job. But they got fired. It's all over the papers. And those tests are flawed. They're flawed beyond belief. They haven't caught up with any of this. So beware. We're not out of the woods yet. Go home and smoke Dacher on your stoop, but be aware that the war is still real. This is a screen grab from an undated and unsigned gazette, or it's a proposed bill by the Department of Justice and Correctional Services. It is evil. They think that when it becomes legal, they will have the right to throw you in jail for having more than 50 seeds, or more than 75 seeds, or more than 100 grams, or less than a kilo, or whatever they think. It is actually eight years behind bars for being in the same place as cannabis and a minor. Does that sound like Dacher on my stoop? No. We've got a lot of work to do, because if you think 
that is legalization, I strongly disagree. So we've written a book about it. It's called The Proposals for Legal Regulation in South Africa. And it's 40 something pages long. And it is snippets of every single legalization protocol in the world for everybody to look at to decide how they want to go forward. We call it a discussion document. It's not our opinion. It's just our research. Please go to buy one at Fields of Green for All. Look at it. Remark on it. Give us your commentary. Tell us if we're getting it right. Within it, we have pages and pages of what we have and what we want. This is what we have. We have all these methods of growing. We have 900,000 cannabis farmers in South Africa for 600 years. They're there. They're producing billions of rands with the cannabis every year. But it's called the black market. We just need to bring them out into the light. There are four platforms that we deal with. We never say recreational cannabis. It sounds like you're doing it for fun. We don't do it for fun. We do it with a purpose. It is responsible adult use. Traditional cultural use. We've just had 30 minutes of the head of the, RA, the Rasa United Front. He is the man that will tell you about spiritual use. The industrial use is fading away. Not many people give a damn about making hemp shirts anymore because everybody's selling CBD from hemp. They have very short memories. We never say medicine because it sets you up for failure. If you tell somebody this product cures you, what happens if it doesn't? Don't even go there. Just say it's a health product. It is in, it's going to increase, increase your standard of life, your well-being. We deal with licensing. If you want to go and get a license from the government to go weed, you have our blessing. If you want to go and grow medical marijuana for the government, you have my blessing. But do you really want to touch your weed through latex gloves for the rest of your life? Because you're going to be wearing a white suit and a face mask, and you will have latex on. And that's the way it is with medical marijuana, so be my guest. However, there are 900,000 cannabis farmers in South Africa who don't give a damn about a license, and neither do I. I will continue what I'm doing till the end of time because I don't need any government to tell me how much I can or cannot grow on my private space. In Lesotho last year, a medical research license was 50,000 rand. Last week it was 5 million rand because the, the license itself is the commodity. Nobody wants to grow weed in Lesotho. It's as harsh as hell. They're just swapping out licenses. It's become the commodity itself. It is rotten to the core, the whole licensing system. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. But hey, if you want a license, be my guest. Here's a cool idea about licensing. The Zim government says we've got to get on the bandwagon quick. But everyone's going to steal the weed, so let's grow it in a prison. Yes, like, imagine doing three years for possession in that prison and looking out the toilet door and seeing the government growing weed. So the government can line their pockets with weed, but the people out here, they're felons if they try to enrich their lives with the sale of cannabis products. I don't buy it for one minute. There has to be systems in place going forward with legalization. And we have a message to you. If you want to get into the cannabis business, consider not growing cannabis. There's enough people growing cannabis. Think of a clever solution that they will need, and they're going to need security. Whether it's a crazy Rottweiler or whether it's CCTV, you're going to need to secure your plants. We need people to control the quality of these plants. So we need a whole industry of test stations, like a mobile clinic, going from valley to valley to valley to test everybody's products to make sure they're getting it right. We need teachers to teach us. And I don't mean like a weekend course with some lunch. I mean one year of solid, solid information to have a degree in cannabis cultivation. We're big fans of alternative energy. We have to be. The ESCOM is broken. If you are growing millions of trees for millions of CBD and you're spending millions on your license, 
We suggest you spell, spend millions on solar to make it sustainable. It has to be, ladies and gentlemen. Let's look at the future of this. Caregiving. What if you don't have a stoop? What if you live in a third floor balcony flat? Or what if you don't have a house at all? How do you get the cannabis that's going to save your bacon? Well, nobody talks about a system of caregivers. America's got it right. There are tons of caregivers using, getting cannabis products to people who need them. How do they fit into the system? Surely they don't need a license. South Africa has led the world in medical research for two decades. Why not with cannabis? Because I tell you what, why are all the foreigners coming here looking at our cannabis? Because it's special. African land race cannabis is the future and they know it. So the government's going to sell us out. So we have to research this plant as quick as we can to make sure we know what is in all of these plants. The Umzimvubu Farmers Support Network, they're deep in the valleys in the Pondo land with the sativas that have been there for centuries. It is their intellectual property right. And how dare Pfizer try and take it away and make Muti out of it? Because the Umzimvubu farmers aren't going to get anything out of that. So the research is paramount. We need to unionize ourselves. We need safety in numbers. And don't talk to me about a minimum wage for the cannabis industry, because the minimum wage is an absolute disgrace. Feed your people well. House them well. You can give them more than a living wage. They need a sustainable wage. They need to uplift their lives. There's millions and millions of rand in cannabis. Make sure your workers get into that money. The big one, cannabis tourism. This country needs foreign exchange. So I've got this idea that you buy a combi and you fit it out really, really lecker. And you put 12 people in paying euro. And you take him to the fields and you smoke some weed. And you go to Lesotho and smoke some weed. And you go to Swaziland and give them pap and putu with their hands in a beehive hut and give them some weed. Two-week trip, 2,000 euro, thanks, for an exchange. It's going to be enormous, boys and girls. It's going to be enormous. But we have to respect what's happening in other parts of southern Africa. In Namibia, it's getting worse. As it gets better here, the Namibian government is clamping down on the brothers and sisters there. In Swaziland, you can't sell weed anymore. It's five rand on the kilo because there's so much weed in South Africa, it's not crossing the border anymore. So we have to talk to the neighbors because this is like this exponential ripple from the Constitutional Court now. Look, it's only eight months since the Concord judgment. Look at this. It's incredible. We need some form of regulation or the people are going to go mad at us. We can't have this free-for-all because that's what we've got. We're trying to bring it into control. Where are we going to smoke it? Because if I go to Colorado right now and buy weed as a tourist, there's absolutely nowhere to smoke it as a tourist in Colorado. That's not legal. This is 420 in Vancouver this year. 150,000 people went to the beach. That is 20 past four in the afternoon, 150,000 people blazing. Whoa! But they needed a permit. It was permitted for the day. We need regulation. How old should you be before you roll your first joint? 18, 21, 25, you name it. But there will be a societal norm about it. What about this? Who had a joint before they drove to the expo? Right. Well, you're all enemies of the state until we get it right, until we make sure that they understand that smoking a joint does not make you a stupid driver. What about the transportation of weed? How about the guy in the franchise there with the medical marijuana? He needs a kilo every five minutes by the looks of it. What about the guy doing the delivery and the cops stop him and he says, oh, but it's for a medical marijuana franchise over there. Oh, yeah, right. So what about the transportation of weed? Who's going to deal with that? What about the storage of it? You grew 10 kilos this year for the whole year. One time, one harvest. What about storage? The cops rock up and they see 10 kilos. They say, oh, well, you must be a dealer. No, but it's my harvest for a year. That's exactly what happened to me. So what about storage? Do you take it to a facility and log it in? Or do you have it at home and just pray for the best? 
And finally, the drug test thing. Whoa, the drug test thing, we've got a long way to go, but we're on it. Things have to change, and I can tell you in other parts of the world where it's legalized, Canada and the USA, they are dealing with it quickly because using cannabis does not mean impairment. So the future is great, and everybody in the world is looking at us in absolute awe, I promise you. Nobody can believe it that the judge said, go and smoke dacha on your stoop. There's just no such thing in America. Maybe there's a few caregivers growing plants in some medical states, but this is like manna from heaven. So don't be dejected. Just remind yourselves every time you're going around these booths that the cops are real and they are around. They'll be here right now. There's probably one listening to me. Community, keep it cool. If you invite people into your social area and a social club, make sure you know them or make sure they've been validated by somebody else and use every single trick in the book to keep yourself afloat. If you go down this valley now to see Greek there in that valley, I swear I've walked it. Five k's over a river, two k's up the mountain to the fields, there's a cell phone. That cell phone can be used to tell those people that the test station's coming. Get your harvest, get it to the tester, find out what's in your weed. Knowledge, just say no. Don't ask questions, go find the answer yourself because nobody listens to the answer. They never listen to my answer anyway. I get asked lots of, info, asked lots of advice and everybody just walks away and does something else. Myrtle and I go to the United Nations twice a year to try and do this from the top down. We have this groundswell now from the bottom. But from the top of the tree, I can tell you the United Nations is considering taking cannabis out of the scheduling system in its entirety on Mar in March next year. Did you hear that? In its entirety, no more cannabis scheduling. And this is a very, very good opportunity to lead from the front with gender equality. It's huge in our lives. We need more ladies in the cannabis industry. We understand why they aren't in the industry, because it's a double whammy. You're a mother as well. Oh, God, if you get caught smoking weed and you're a mother, it's, it's, it's awful. They think you're a bad mother for using it. You guys can help us by joining the conversation. We're everywhere. We made it that way. Myrtle and I write over 2,000 words a week in blog posts, full of information. We do two hours every week on YouTube and the Hotbox Show. Cutting edge South African cannabis news every week on Thursday night at 7 o'clock on the Hotbox Show. Consider joining our green network. A portal in the back of Fields of Green for All where people pay a monthly subscription to get the inside track of what we do, to get the free t-shirt, to get tickets to all our events. It helps us more than you can possibly believe. It's 150 rand a month. And with those people, we can plan what to do. If you end up on the wrong end of the stick with the Hawks, we have a phone number you can ring and on the end of that line is a cannabis-friendly lawyer. Do not pick a lawyer just like that. They know nothing in this respect. You need a specialist who can nip it in the bud as soon as it happens. These are available at Fields of Green for All, number 27. That speaks for itself. We're a non-profit com company, and so far, legalization has cost us 4.7 million rand. So we're still looking for money. We never have enough money. So please help us out. So this is another thing. There are 31,000 signatures on that petition, but it's six years old. It's like pulling teeth. Help us. Step up to the plate. Sign the petition that you want the legalization of cannabis in South Africa. Because when we go to the first portfolio meeting soon with the government, we need to take 100,000 signatures to prove that it's just not us speaking. It's the whole country. Be proudly green. The hands went up. Nobody spoke. The people who don't smoke cannabis products. Everybody else in the room. Be proud of your cannabis use. You're not a scaly criminal. You're a human being. And be proud of your cannabis use. Because in the end, Everybody will wish that they had 40 years of cannabis in their system when they're 60 years old. I promise you, start now. 
Do not wait till you're sick. There are three books for sale. The one on the left is the book that we published through the United Nations of all the sustainable development goals the United Nations has promulgated for the next 10 years. And would you believe it, cannabis dovetails into this so perfectly they can't ignore us anymore. Please buy these books. It's our way of fundraising to stop the cops. There's a booklet about Dhaka private clubs. If you think you want to own a club, look at this book. It's full of information from Spain as to how they did it with local information. We know of six that are running now with thousands of members already. Stop the Cops has got a raffle on. And I mean it, don't, don't just, it's not about stopping the cop booting down your door. It's getting rid of cops out of weed altogether. Altogether. Next time somebody comes to look at my weed, I want him with a clipboard, not handcuffs. So we've got a raffle going on for this hamper. And there's a beautiful backstory to this hamper. When we were putting the 45,000 rand together two weeks ago for bail, people didn't have any money, so they supplied us with absolutely everything. So in the box at the stall, there's a box with a street value of 5,000 rand, and it is full of weed. Everything is a THC Everything is a THC product. That's why we got cellophane wrappers on it. It's like plutonium. So please, 50 rand will get you a ticket to win the hamper full of goodies. And that, would you believe, is the same price as a scoop of CBD ice cream. So step up to the plate, please. So now I'd just like to apologize for sort of being in your face. I've been told I've been a zealot before. But I'm so passionate about this, and I'm pleading with you not to have short memories. Remember, there's still a war on. We've won loads of battles, but we haven't quite got it yet. We've made amazing, amazing progress. We should all be proud of ourselves as a nation, because that dacher on my stoop is key to freedom forever. And one day, I promise you, with me and Myrtle and all the team of crazies from Fields of Green for All, we're going to work at it so hard that I will guarantee you that everybody will have a field of green for all. My name's Julian Stobbs. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Julian. Coming up uh, next on the uh, convention stage, we've got Roy. Roy, the founder of the PNC uh, Cancer Support Group. Coming up in about two minutes. Two minutes coming up on the convention stage. <laughs>